What movie is so good you'd recommend it to all your friends, but so emotionally traumatic that you'll never watch it again? Hotel Rwanda fits. Come and see. Wonderful movie, but even more devastating than Grave of the Fireflies, in my opinion. Come and see is a fantastic movie. The first paragraph of Roger Ebert's review summarizes the movie perfectly. Greater than it said that you can't make an effective anti-war film because war by its nature is exciting, and the end of the film belongs to the survivors. No one would ever make the mistake of saying that about Elam Klimov's, Come and See. This 1985 film from Russia is one of the most devastating films ever about anything, and in it, the survivors must envy the dead. Dancer in the Dark. Amazing performance by Bjork and Brutally Sad. I bought a copy of the DVD after seeing the movie because I loved it so much. I lent the disc to several friends and looked at it many times myself, but could just never summon the energy to watch it again. I was on one of my first dates with a woman I ended up dating for years and I decided to rent this movie. I thought I would shed a few silent tears and show my sensitive side. I ended up ugly crying uncontrollably by the end. Like full snot flowing gasping for breath. She was unfazed and concerned for me. The Iron Giant would have been a better choice. ETA thank you Reddit for hearing my story. Today was complicated for me and I appreciate the uplift. I check out Reddit when I'm anxious and it has been silly and joyous feeling your commiseration. Keep being kind you generous badasses. Minus 42 year old dude who loves you all. I'll give the same answer every time this comes up, Mary and Max. Yes. Thank you. I've never known anyone who knows this movie. It's such a beautiful movie and so damn sad. I've recommended it to lots of people but it's hard to find. The Hunt, 2012. A Danish film by Thomas Vinterberg starring Mads Mikkelsen. That. Effing. Movie. Things it shows. Children should not be exposed to pornography. Children who are being questioned to see if they were abused should only have that questioning done by a specially trained expert and possibly with potentially a trained advocate present because it's too easy to lead them to a conclusion they think the questioner wants to hear, especially if they think they are in trouble. Note. I edited this due to the several very good points several people said about parents shouldn't be present. Some people are also saying best practice is one-on-one -on -one with that trained forensic questioner. Basically everyone in that story ended up effed up. Boys don't cry. It made me depressed for days. I saw that on a first date. We drove home in complete silence. Really unfortunate choice for a first date. We need to talk about Kevin. That was a truly visceral experience. True story. I was working at Kmart a while back. There was an incident in the paper where a man had murdered someone not too far from where I lived. His last name, incidentally, was Christmas. I only mention that because maybe a week or two later I rang up a woman who paid with a check. I had to see her ID and I saw her last name was Christmas. And I said something along the lines of, you must be merry. You know, just trying to be friendly. And she says, not really, since my son went to jail for murder. I hadn't made the connection until she said it. Turns out she had been getting all kinds of poo from neighbors and such. I told her I was sorry and while my follow-up remark of, there's one in every family, probably wasn't the most tactful, she appreciated the sympathy. We need to talk about Kevin came out much later and when I saw the plot of the film, it reminded me of that event. Once were warriors. Life is beautiful. This movie is unspeakably tragic. But it's also profoundly beautiful. The love that the family had for each other gets me every time. Roberto Benigni was perfection in this role. Leaving Las Vegas. Nicolas Cage is amazing in it, won an Oscar for it. But as a recovered alcoholic, that film hits way too close to home. Good film though. Yeah, I remember catching it on TV really late at night one weekend and I stopped to watch it hoping for it to be a Nick Cage film that I could laugh about later. My god, there was no laughing. I had no idea Nick Cage could play in a drama so well. The Pianist, I can't bring myself to watch it again. The anger and hopelessness I felt for that man and those people is beyond compare. My grade 10 teacher forced the entire class to watch that during history and all I remember is majority of the class sobbing crying. It was so sad and every single scene in that movie is engraved into my head. 
Another similar movie that traumatized me was The Boy in the Striped Pajamas Holy. What's eating Gilbert GRP? I'm not sure I've ever replied to an Ask Reddit thread, but I have a relevant answer to this one. Wind River. Somebody had recommended it in an R. Movies thread, and I really liked Jeremy Renner, so my wife and I sat down to watch it. The tension in the film ratchets up nicely, you get a sense of the desperation these folks on the tribe are experiencing, the hopelessness in their search for justice. I enjoyed the dynamic with Renner's character and the locals, he's from the place and still an outsider, which is something we can all identify with in some way. The big shootout at the remote camp, why is he flanking me, was incredible in every aspect of filmmaking. My heart was actually pounding during that scene, a response I rarely get while watching a film. But my god, that RP scene just destroyed us. I know that's the point of it, to telegraph how sickening the act was, the senselessness of it all. I don't think I got an hour of sleep that night and had trouble getting that scene out of my mind for probably two weeks afterward. I think we both cried during and after the movie. I generally enjoy films concerning darker tones, like horror, thrillers, mystery, but something about that scene broke me for more than a week. I guess you could call that great filmmaking, but I'll never watch that movie again and do my best to think of it as little as possible moving forward. Still think it was a great movie for a lot of reasons, but Jesus Christ, that scene. Statistics are kept for every group of missing people except Native American women. Nobody knows how many are missing. I genuinely felt devastated when that appeared in the end title card. Full Metal Jacket. I watched the very first bit of it when I was in officer training and thought it was a comedy. A few months later I sat down and watched the whole thing. It's not a comedy. I can, and have, watched the first half anytime. That second half though, OOPH. Agreed. I was not prepared for that level of heavy. The Road. Watched it when it first came out. Loved it. Can't put myself through it again though. It's so hard going and heartbreaking. I read the book and loved it. I'm never reading it again or watching the film. What Dreams May Come. It's the most beautiful movie and I think everyone should watch it at least once. But I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it since Robin Williams died. I actually haven't watched anything he's in since he died. I actually sought this movie out on my tribute to Robin Weekend after soon after his death. The movie was so deep but then watching it, knowing how he died, made it so much more. Dear Zachary, hands down. However I've seen it four times. I scrolled down just to find this. It's my answer to this question every time. Can't even console yourself with it being just a movie. Stand by me. The last line gets me thinking every time. I never had any friends later on like the ones I had when I was 12. Jesus, does anyone? Pan's Labyrinth. I thought I was going in to see a cool fantasy flick. And it turned out to be a movie dealing with trauma, abuse, and coping mechanisms. Still a great film, but so gut-wrenching. I worked in a video rental store when that movie came out. Luckily I watched it right away because the number of people who were coming in to rent it for young children was shocking. I felt like a broken record repeating this is not a fairy tale for children please don't let your six-year-old watch this. American History X Dude the effing curb stomp is still clear in my mind and it's been years. Bridge to Terabithia That movie was marketed as a portal fantasy film akin to Narnia or Harry Potter. Going into it expecting that made that scene even more shocking. Schindler's List I just watched this for the first time about a month ago. I held it together fine until Oscar broke down crying because he couldn't save more people. Then came the waterworks. The girl in the red hood did it for me. Didn't expect them to go there. Not movie but episode, Black Mirror, Entire History of You. Season 1 Episode 3. I watched the entire history of you and enjoyed it. Next day at the office we were discussing our lease and couldn't pinpoint the month we signed, contract is locked up and the guy with the key is out. No big deal, I took picture of the new carpet we got installed so I can figure it out from that. I had just gotten divorced and scrolling through family photos to find that carpet, that effing carpet, all but destroyed me. Had a different view of the episode after that and can't watch it. Fun fact, it's been almost 10 years since the first season of Black Mirror.
This and Shut Up and Dance are hands down my favorite episodes. It's hard to watch entire history of you now but when I do it always hits hard. Old Boy, the Korean 2003 one. Watch this with a girl on a Netflix and chill date CUS we'd both heard good things, but had no idea what it was about. There was no chill, and no second date. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Came here to say this. This movie, no words. Still haunts me. Still fs me up, takes me back there, breaks my heart. They hire the lead actor, Asa Butterfield, for his innocence. He knew nothing about the Holocaust. They didn't tell him anything about the Holocaust or the gist of the story, he was just playing a little boy who played with another little boy through a fence. They maintained that brilliant innocence of his throughout the movie. That's what makes the ending of this movie just so very soul-wrenching. I'm still so very moved by this film. Loudly crying. Requiem for a dream. Watched this without knowing much about it with my roommate's whole family, to the end. Never thought that scene would end. Manchester by the sea all day. Who else is scrolling for good movie recommendations? Kids. 1995. The Grave of the Fireflies. I'm never, ever, gonna watch that poo again. It's from Studio Ghibli, the same from Spirited Away, Send to Chihiro. An absolute masterpiece for sure, but don't expect to find happy little creatures in it. Unfun fact. God F was originally released as a double feature with my neighbor Totoro. Even less fun, they played in the bad order. Not a movie, but there is no way I can watch Bojack Horseman again. That's too much, man. I binged the entire series in a very short period of time and felt almost, maybe not traumatized, but like I was stumbling out of this dark tunnel, when it was over. Disoriented and uncomfortable because it got too much inside my own head. Great show, we'll never watch again. Green Mile. Obligatory F. Percy. Elephant, directed by Gus Van Sant. Spoilers below. The film is, in part, based around the idea of what would have happened if the Columbine boys were able to carry out their plans to the fullest extent. Extremely well put together film and it shook me to my core. 10 out of 10, we'll never watch again. The Land Before Time. For a kid's movie it's so emotionally crushing right from the get-go and then you have the tragic murder of the 10-year-old voice actress for Ducky, Link. Moonlight. It was so realistic to my life that it made me uncomfortable. You're the only man that's ever touched me. Something about that line is always what gets me. Just the idea of being so starved of love and affection, wanting to be held or wanting someone you can be vulnerable with, but instead going your whole life behind a hardened shell because no one ever told you it was okay to love whoever you want to love. The tender memory of his night with Kevin on the beach being the one time he ever let his guard down, the one time he let himself be vulnerable, only to spend the rest of his life yearning for the ability to feel that again. I'm a straight white woman but that movie is just so raw and real that it left me with a pit in my stomach like I was Chiron myself. The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. That scene where they're sleeping in the bathroom was hard. Dead Poet Society. It hit me hard mate. I tried watching it again recently, I saw it in school when I was younger, and dude. Robin Williams is so good but it makes me too sad to watch it. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.